In this week's Superhero Simulation, we're going to be looking at a cool new tool called Sim Studio Tools. And even better, we're going to be looking at how to simplify Iron Man's reactor core. As always, let me know if you have any questions, either at james.herson at autodesk.com, follow me on Twitter at MrSimulationRocks, or follow us at Autodesk Simulation on Twitter. So myself, I like the guy on the left, the cool comic book guy with the flames coming out of his feet and the laser shooting out of his hands. But some of you know Iron Man from the movies, which have recently come out, I guess fairly recently, which is the guy on the right, the bad teenage mustache and all that. So let's take a look at him and see how we can simplify that reactor core that powers him and his suit, I suppose. So for those of you who don't know, his power core, or reactor core, is what that glowing thing is underneath his shirt. So take a closer look at that and you'll see that it's a pretty complex piece of machinery. You know, I kind of cropped this out to make it a little less gross, but there it is shoved into his chest, which somehow powers the rest of his suit and keeps him alive, I believe. And then to actually do a simulation on it, we need to model it in whatever CAD package it is you feel like using. You know, maybe something like Fusion 360 or Inventor. And from there, we're going to take that model and drop it into Sim Studio Tools and simplify it. So we're going to get rid of some of those ridges and fillets and holes and just make it a little bit easier for a simulation package to work with. And so there you can see the finished product after we simplify it. So with that, let's jump into the software a bit. So here's Sim Studio Tools. Uh, pretty open interface, and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open the file. So if we go up to the left corner, we can click on that little open button, and now we can choose what file we want to open. So if we look down at the bottom right, you can see that we have all sorts of different file formats that we support, and we're actually going to work with a SolidWorks model on this one. Uh, someone was nice enough to put it on GrabCAD for us, and open it up. And after doing this, you're going to see that uh, Sim Studio Tools looks very similar to Fusion 360, so a little plug for our friends over in Fusion Land. Uh, good news, if you know how to use Fusion 360, you're going to be pretty good at using Sim Studio Tools as well. So we're going to start by simplifying some of these details. Uh, the biggest concern for me is all of those filleted or rounded edges around the outer surface. So let's go ahead and take care of some of those. So to do this, I'm just going to get in, in, into a uh, nicer view for us to look at, and we can just select some of these surfaces and choose to delete them. I believe these are all like a pattern fe feature or something like that. So selecting these and pressing delete gets rid of all of them. And let's see, I missed one, delete that. And if we zoom out a bit, you're going to see that not only did we delete the ones that we selected, but also the other ones that were patterned off of it. So we easily and quickly took care of those details, which would have been a terrible pain to mesh uh, in mechanical, CFD, whatever package you're working with. Next, you see this ring cut out. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned that there might be some geometry errors there, parts interfering or something like that. Uh, that might cause some meshing problems. So I'm going to go ahead and just create that surface or that extrusion and make it a little bit better. So we could use the press pull command or we could use the extrude command, basically doing the same things. And if I choose that top surface, I can just click and drag. And now you see it shows up red, so when that surface is dragged down to be interfering, it's going to automatically choose the cut operation. We're going to actually to choose join, and now you can see that that gap is filled in, and so since all these parts are now joined together, there isn't going to be a problem when we mesh because uh, they're all going to be made out of that same material. So next, let's look at a few features that are special to Sim Studio tools. The first one is the repair option, which is really great. So if you happen to download a model that's a little bit sloppy, or if you aren't real accurate in your CAD design, you can go in here and select your model, choose a tolerance for gapping and things like that, I'll set it to 0.5 millimeters, press this button, and it's going to tell you if it found any problems in your geometry and if there's anything to fix. Fortunately, after the changes we made, there's no problems with this model, so we're going to be able to continue to move forward. This is actually going to automatically fix some of those errors in your other models, though. The next thing we're going to look at is the simplify option. So you see there are four buttons here, and the ones we're going to look at first are suppress and unsuppress. 
So if we choose a part that we don't want included, you can just click the suppress button, and now when we send it over to simulation, it will automatically disappear, so it won't be part of the analysis. We actually want to keep it there, so we're going to choose to unsuppress it. Next, let's take a look at uh, remove features. So let's select that very complicated ring in the middle, and you see that all of the features are selected over there to the right. It's looking for fillets, holes, chamfers, pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and just choose hole, and when we do that, you see that three holes show up. And if we extend that out, we can change the size of holes it's looking for, so it finds that fourth one that's added in there. But we want to keep that one, uh, so let's choose the delete button, and when you do that, those three holes are automatically removed. Now be careful there, because all of those other round looking holes might not actually use the hole command. They could just be extrusions, so you would have to remove those in a different way. Uh, maybe by using that press pull command or the extrude command again, uh, or maybe making a sketch over top of them. So just simple CAD maneuvers that most of you are probably very familiar with. So with that, all we have to do is send it over to whatever CAD or whatever uh, simulation package we want. Uh, you see that we have tie-ins to CFD and mechanical right here. So I'm going to send this over to CFD. Maybe we would do a heat transfer analysis on it or something like that. So let's give it a name, Reactor Core CFD. Click Save. And it's automatically going to launch Autodesk CFD Flex for me which is uh, the version I have installed on my machine, and then it goes through and shows over to the left that we're all set with importing successfully, so no geometry problems for our mesh. This just shows that our mesh is going to be successful, and moving forward we're going to be able to run our analysis without complications.